This is Warren Buffett. He is currently the sixth richest man in the world, with a net worth of 96 billion US dollars, money he made by being one of the most successful investors ever, but he has on several occasions recommended a more passive approach of investing in the market, more specifically the S&P 500, for long-term returns. Why he recommends the S&P 500 will be clear after this video, when we have examined its performance over the past 70 years. By looking at past market performance, it will prepare you for what can be expected in the future, even though it can never be a guarantee of future performance. To understand the performance of the S&P 500, it is important to understand its different components that make up its performance. The S&P 500 is made up of the 500 largest US company stocks, so when buying the S&P 500, you are purchasing parts of 500 different companies. These companies are weighed after how much they are worth, meaning that Apple will be a bigger part of the index than Microsoft, because it is currently worth more. The S&P 500 has a similar performance to the whole US stock market, because those 500 companies are such a large part of it. So investing in the S&P 500 is like investing in the whole US stock market. There are two important aspects of a stock that determines its performance in the S&P 500. The price of the stock and its dividend. A stock represents an ownership of a fraction of a company. So the price will change depending on how valuable others find that portion of the company. With that ownership, you also have the right to the company's profits, where they can pay out a portion of it to the stockholders as a dividend. The price of the S&P 500 will therefore move up and down depending on the price of its 500 stocks and pay out a dividend that is a combination of the 500 company's dividends. When only looking at the price of the S&P 500 over the past 70 years, we can see that it has continuously increased with temporary decreases. This is without the dividends it produced. If we take the dividends and reinvest them in the S&P 500, this is the performance we get over the past 70 years. What this graph is missing is that $1 in 1950 is not worth the same amount as $1 70 years later. Today it would be worth about $12. Because of inflation, a dollar can purchase less stuff in the future than it can now. So inflation should be included when evaluating the true performance of the S&P 500. In this graph, the performance of the S&P 500 is adjusted for inflation. We still see that it increases over time, but it has longer periods where it stays flat and the total increase is smaller. With the dividends reinvested, we get a steadier increase, but the total is still considerably smaller than before accounting for inflation. So what is the average performance of the S&P 500? If we first consider the case where dividends are reinvested and without inflation, we get an average increase of about 11.8% per year. This is a considerable amount that means your investments will double in value every 6.2 years. If the dividends of the S&P 500 are again reinvested, but this time the performance is adjusted for inflation, the average increase each year is about 7.9%. This means your investments will double in value about every 9.1 years. 7.9% is considerably less than 11.8%, but it is a more real representation of what can be expected from investing in the market. This shows that what you can buy with your investments increase with about 7.9% each year, which is what most people care about. This can be considered the real return of the S&P 500. This should give you a good picture of what could be expected as an average return for the coming decades.